So the 15 inch MacBook Air is incredibly thin and light. It's almost as if it's got the best of everything from the MacBook Air and the Pro models. You now get an impressive 15 inch screen display. It has six speakers with spatial audio support. It has up to 18 hours of battery life and a slightly larger trackpad. But is the 15 inch MacBook Air for you? Can it handle intensive workloads? Or maybe the Pro models are more suited to you. Well, in this video, we'll go over how thin and light the 15 inch MacBook Air is, how the speakers sound, what the display is like, size comparisons and some differences with the Pro models and whether you should go for the Air or maybe the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So the 15 inch MacBook Air is incredibly thin. It's slightly thicker than the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air by about 0.2 millimeters. And the entire thickness of the Air is almost the same thickness as the bottom half of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And it's even thinner than the 11 inch 2012 MacBook Air. Now that's comparing the thicker side of the 2012 MacBook Air. If you obviously compare the thinner side, it's still a bit thinner. And I know it's not exactly comparing apples to apples, or is it? And as you pick up the air, you can feel immediately how much lighter and thinner it is. It just feels so much more portable and lightweight when compared to the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro. This MacBook represents true portability. And with the air, you won't find any speaker grills on the 15 inch, but you do get six speakers and they sound They sound all right, it's not as good as the 14 inch and the 16 inch, I think. And even though they support spatial audio, the sound just feels a bit, a bit distant and it's not as lively or rich when compared to the 14 inch or 16 inch. But for laptop speaker standards, I personally think they are still a good set of speakers. The other thing about the Air that you should be aware of is that out of the box, it can only support one external display up to 6K resolution and at 60 Hertz. To connect up to two monitors, you will need to have a docking station of some sort. I have the Anchor 563 docking station, which isn't the cheapest, and there are probably cheap alternatives, but I've been able to connect two monitors. You'll also need to install an additional piece of software called Display Link. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And with one monitor, you can have a max resolution of 4K and the other at 1080p. It's a little bit blurry and it's not perfect, but it's still possible. So when comparing the Air to the Pro models, there are some obvious and subtle differences between the two. For starters, the chip configuration. The 15 inch Air as a standard comes with an M2 chip with eight core CPU and 10 core GPU. And that's the highest chip configuration you can go for. Whereas with the Pro, you have quite a few chip configuration options. And of course, with both, you can upgrade and configure the RAM and SSD storage. And with the Air as standard, you get a dual USB-C adapter at 35 watts. At no additional cost, you can have a single USB-C adapter at 70 watts. The other thing about the Air is that it, you only get two Thunderbolt ports on one side and a headphone jack on the other. Whereas in the Pro models, you get three Thunderbolt ports, two on one side, one on the other, along with HDMI, SD card slot, and a headphone jack. Now you can solve the ports problem with the, with the Air, with a USB-C dongle or a docking station. The more subtle differences are the keyboard. It's the same keyboard, but you won't find this black base background in the Air that you see in the Pro models. I think this is purely aesthetic reasons more than anything else. The Pro models have a distinctive MacBook Pro etching on the back, Wi-Fi with the Air, you get Wi-Fi 6. On the Pros, you get Wi-Fi 6E. And of course, you'll need a compatible router or Wi-Fi access point that, support, that supports Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E to gain the benefits. No fans in the 15 inch, it's purely passive cooling, whereas the Pro, it does have fans. Battery life with the 15 inch Air, you get up to 18 hours, which is same as the 14 inch. And the 16 inch, you get 22 hours. Screen resolutions, I'll throw up some screen resolution for all the MacBooks. And the 15 inch, you do get a little bit more viewing space when compared to the 14 inch, which is gonna be helpful somewhat for those multitasking scenarios and apps where you need that larger screen space. Now with the 15 inch Air, you won't find the same display as you get with the Pro models. It's not the fancy ProMotion XDR display with 120 Hertz, but don't let that put you off too much. It's still a great screen. I've been using it for a few weeks now and it's absolutely fine. Yeah, the Pro models, you get a thousand nits brightness and a high refresh rate, whereas the Air, you only get 500 nits, but it's still a great screen and it's great to look at. Whether you're typing, reading, coding, general life admin, watching videos, totally sufficient. Some people may prefer the ProMotion XDR display, but to be honest, you can't really tell it only when it comes to brightness setting and probably gaming. 
And if you have any doubts or concerns with the screen, I say pop into the Apple store or retail store and check out the screen for yourself. So just to compare the 16 inch, the 15 inch and the 14 inch stacked on top of each other, you can start to see how the 15 inch compares to the other two pro models and what kind of size difference you get. And just for fun, how it compares with the 2012 11 inch MacBook Air. Now, if you're thinking of getting the Air and deciding whether to go with the base model or not, it'll all depend on your use case and how you're gonna use it. I think the base model with eight gigs of RAM and 250 gigs of storage is gonna be fine for the majority of people. You can happily perform life admin tasks such as email, web browsing, writing, watching videos. Heck, you can even do some coding and some video editing and you'll be absolutely fine. If you have a lot of data storage requirements though, then you may wanna bump it up to 512 gigs of disk space. If however, you tend to do a little bit more intensive tasks and the software and tools you use require more memory, then upgrading the RAM to 16 gigs will be more beneficial. Which brings me on to the next question. Should you go for the Air or for an extra $300, upgrade to the 14 inch MacBook Pro? I think the ultimate question is gonna be down to one, budget, and two, your primary purpose. If you have a limited amount of budget, then the Air is the most affordable. If, however, you have a little bit more budget to spend, the next question is, what's more important to you or takes priority, portability or performance? Yes, the 14-inch MacBook Pro is still portable, but the Air is just so much thinner and lighter, which makes it so much more easy to carry around with you. And if you're always commuting, traveling, and always on the go, the Air is gonna be a fantastic choice. Plus you have a slightly wider screen to use when you're on the go. If on the other hand, it's the performance that you need, then the 14 inch MacBook Pro is gonna be the one for you. And the main reason to get the 14 inch Pro is to, if you find yourself using that specific piece of software or tool that needs that extra power, or you find yourself multitasking a lot, and this isn't the regular multitasking of apps, many apps open and you're just flipping between the two. It's for those times when you find yourself on a video Zoom call and you're sharing your screen and you're doing some pair programming or something similar or you're video editing with 100 gigs of data and whilst you're exporting a video, you may wanna start working on editing some photos or you're copying gigabytes of data from one place to the other. This is where the 14-inch MacBook Pro comes in. The Air will still be able to do it, it's just not as capable compared to the 14-inch MacBook Pro with that M1 or M2 Pro chip. And that's the thing with the Air, its primary purpose is not performance, it's designed to be light and thin and that's what Apple has done and delivered. It's a truly portable laptop. And on occasions you can still get those intensive workloads done. And you know what, to add things even more to the mix, check out the Apple refurbished store. You'll probably find some 14 inch MacBook Pros, M1 or M2s, and the 13 inch MacBook Air. And if you're patient enough, you'll probably start to see the 15 inch MacBook Air pop up as well. Food for thought, I guess. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.